two of my favourite pieces of the silverware at Chatsworth are the Pilgrim bottles. They don't really serve a purpose, they're purely ornamental. It was pure bravado by the first Duke. They are very much part of this great desire to have the biggest and the best. The world's greatest collectors are not only defined by great wealth. Sotheby's takes you inside Chatsworth House, the ancestral home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Discover the passion that has driven 16 generations of the Cavendish family to create one of the world's most extraordinary art collections. The metalwork collection at Chatsworth is quite vast and very impressive when you see it in its entirety. I think the most memorable pieces of silverware which are on the visitor route are the silver chandelier and the perfume burner. They were both made for the first Duke in about 1694. The third is a pair of pilgrim bottles of about the same date. People always ask about them, they're fascinated by them. They are representations of the bottles that the Crusaders would have carried around with them on their horses. But these are about this height, so not a practical thing to carry on a donkey if you're going on a pilgrimage. They're just purely to show off. The perfume burner in the state bedroom is another item that people always ask about because it's so unusual. I mean, that's an extraordinary piece, and it's just sitting there, and you think, did they really burn perfume in something as big as that? We do light it twice a day, actually, just to give that special ambience in the bedroom of how it would have been. It's almost like a, an air freshener, the 17th century. In 1700, hygiene was not what it is now, by a long, long way, but people's sense of smell was just as well developed, so everybody would have had a perfume burner in their house, but nobody would have had a three foot high solid silver perfume burner. The first Duke just wanted to establish himself as a connoisseur and a great collector, but also of great wealth. The silver chandelier, it is a curious object, it's rather beautiful. In the six Duke's time, he had several different houses, and so he would take the chandelier with him for their entertaining and everything. And so they had to be in really good, secure chests to take to the next house. They couldn't have sets of silver in each one of six different houses, so they took them around. That's how it worked. Entertaining was a big part of their lives. When the Six Duke built the big new dining room, all the silver for the table were all commissioned specially for that table in that room. It's pretty over the top, but that was him. Amanda and I both like commissioning silver, but not on that scale. The silver we've had made is by various different makers. I saw at a friend's house a honeycomb held up by this silver frame, and I thought, well, that was a nice idea to put on the table. So we commissioned Brett Payne to make one for us, and so there we have a modern one. There's a Japanese silversmith called Hiroshi Suzuki. He made a few things for us. So I then said to him, look, could you make a salver for the jugs and the sugar bowl? And he said, yes, of course, I've been delighted, but you have to tell me what a salver is. Anyway, he produced an absolutely beautiful slightly dished salver with exactly the right flat places for all the things he'd already made. And it's one of the things I'm most excited that we commissioned, it really worked. With every opportunity we can, we do try to get out the contemporary metalwork as well as the larger historic pieces. I love that, it's part of that continuity of sharing that you've always had at Chatsworth. What we're not trying to be is a museum. What we are is an accumulation of lots of generations, acquisitions, gifts, things that they've fallen in love with, had made, either for practical use or for show. 